Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, exploring the issues affecting all of our lives. I'm your host, Austin Harris. It's been 20 years since the People's Progressive Movement entered the Cayman Islands political landscape, and during that time, they have led three government administrations and enacted a number of policies that are still in effect today. As we celebrate that 20-year milestone and the legacy for the future, we also take a look back at those early years and ask, what was the impetus behind the movement and is it still relevant today? In studios with us to help me engage today's conversation is my pleasure to welcome the MP for Georgetown South, Miss Barbara Connolly, and the former leader of the party, the Honorable D. Kurt Tibbetts. Thank you, Austin. Um, I'm very happy to be here today um, at the People's Progressive Movement studio, along with my very good friend, um, the, cat the drive Honorable in. D. Kurt Tibbetts. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, it's a real pleasure to have uh, both of you in studios, and we look forward uh, to our discussion here. Maybe we start at the beginning. Um, tell us a little bit, um, perhaps to you, Kurt, uh, behind the early decision to form the People's Progressive Movement. Try to do this as quickly as I can. Well, take your time. Well, first of all, when I got elected in 1992, I ran as an independent candidate. I did the same in 96. We had a group for the district of Georgetown, but it didn't go any further than that. And my whole focus at that point in time, if I had been allowed the privilege to serve as an elected member, to be of service to the electorate. Georgetown, first of all, but the whole country extended. And in 2000, when I got elected, again, was myself and Alden in Georgetown. And after the election, it suddenly dawned on me, we have to form a government because there was no clear group who was leading the way. Mm -hmm. And that was not a nice experience for anybody. In fact, truthfully speaking, on more than one occasion, I remember saying to Alden, Alden, listen, this makes absolutely no sense to me. Let's sit in our little corner, make them fight over it, form their government, and we'll sit in our corner and just serve the constituents, which is what we have asked for the privilege to do. Didn't quite work out like that, so we had to form a government. And we did form a government, because there's a deadline yes. between election and when a new government has to be installed. But I knew from then, based on how the government was formed and who the makeup of the government was, that it was impossible for it to last. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was any ill will meant at the time by anyone, um, except jockeying for position and all like that. But at, at the end of the day, we had a government that we were starting from ground zero, if I may use that terminology, because there was no clear set of agreed policies. There was nothing specific that the public knew that this government was going to try to achieve. Yes. So we were trying to play catch up all the time and trying to get agreement. And that was not a nice thing to do after you get elected. Correct. So the government did not last. A year later, there was a change in the membership of the cabinet, etc. At that point in time was when it dawned on me crystal clear. You cannot run a country becoming as sophisticated as the Cayman Islands was becoming by simply having ad hoc relationships getting elected and sitting down saying, I'm the smart guy in the town, so let's put all of us smart people together and run the country. Doesn't work. Right. I found that out the hard way. 
So in doing so, we morphed to the point where in order to do this thing properly, you have to form a group and start from scratch that by the time you're ready to go to the electorate to seek to be elected, you can show them who the members of the government are going to be yeah. if you elect that group. These are the policies that they want. And on top of all of that, you want to create, we wanted to create an organization which was all inclusive of the people so that we could hear what they wanted. Mm -hmm. That when we transmitted the message in a political campaign, we were, no, we were with knowledge of what the people wanted. Mm -hmm. And that, the word for that was a party. Right. So whether you want to call it a group, a party, or whatever, the structure is what was absolutely important. And I can say this without, I shouldn't say fear of contradiction, but without anyone being able to sensibly contradict me, that any modern governmental structure cannot survive or function properly without an organization which makes all the people involved and be able to have out front the names of your candidates, the policies that you want to achieve, and be able to say who the leadership is. Yeah. And that came clear from the people when we did form the party. So um, that was how we got to that point, and here we are 20 years later. Quite right. Um, now, certainly you weren't alone. Uh, it, you know, it may have dawned on you uh, at the time um, that there was need for uh, a more cohesive group of individuals, certainly from the elected membership, but certainly they, you weren't the only one behind the impetus to formalize this group. Ms. Connolly, maybe you can um, share with us who were some of the founding members of the People's Progressive Movement uh, in those early days? Okay, so Austin, the People's Progressive Movement was actually formed in September 2002. And our founding members were five elected members, and those consist of Honorable Kurt Tibbetts, Sir Ali McLaughlin, Mr. Ard McLean, Mr. Anthony Eden, Miss Edna Moyle, and Miss Lucille Seymour, who actually wasn't an elected representative, but she was a part of that founding um, body. Indeed. I have to interject just for one minute to give you a quick joke about Lucille. All right. Lucille had run the election yes. and she was unsuccessful. Um, she made a very credible showing, but she was unsuccessful. When they had the meeting of the Legislative Assembly one year after the election, which changed the government because mm -hmm. that's the process that had to take place. When I was coming out of the legislature, I saw her running down the stairs and she, she ran straight down the stairs and she grabbed onto my arm. She said, I go in with you wherever you go in. <laughs> <laughs> Safe bet. Safe bet indeed. I had to, I'll never forget that day. <laughs> what would you say were some of the early core values that distinguished the People's Progressive Movement? Uh, and are those core values the same today? Yes. Well, the, the, one of the most important things that we thought should happen is to include the electorate in the decision-making process. So we were quite prepared and still are prepared to have meetings for whoever want to attend, that they can air their views. And, and I mean, country before self is paramount and the belief in God is also extremely important. I don't care what religion you are, but we are a God-fearing nation 
and we have to not just expound on that, but to live it. Yes. So those are some of the basic tenets that you would, you would want. There are other written policy um, features that, that there are, which time won't allow for us to go into today. But just basic human decency, being all inclusive and making sure that decisions are made for country and not self. Those were some of the underpinning mm -hmm. foundations which we use to group to, to put the group together. All right. Uh, and Austin, um, our theme was for love of country. And that still stands with us today. Um, for love of country and for love of our people. Indeed. indeed. That's what PPM and AKA the Progressives stands for. I see. Uh, now, back to you, Mr. Tibbetts. Interestingly, you stated earlier on that you were first elected in 1992, then 1996, and then 2000 as an independent member for the district of Georgetown. What year did the PPM um, have the opportunity to gain its first government majority? And how did that affect the policy direction of that first majority government administration? Well, this was a 2005 election. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a 2004 election because of Hurricane Ivan. So it was extended six months because of all of the devastation. And the, the election was in 2005. We ran nine candidates. There were 15 seats at the time. So we ran nine candidates and all nine candidates won. And there's always the, the, the running joke that we ran nine candidates and ended up with 10 seats okay. because Moses K, my MLA from Cayman Brock, yes. he, um, he ran as an independent, he won his seat and he came on board immediately and became part of us continuing on with making sure we had the right policies in place. By the time we had the 2005 election, we had had no ends of meetings with our constituents in the various districts, going all around the various districts, hearing from them what they thought was best for the country, the direction that we should be moving forward with. And we took a lot of that information and of course, we had to bear out certain facts outside of what people thought to make sure that things were not untenable circumstances and not only could it work, but that it would end up being beneficial. And we were able to put all of those things together. So by the time we formed a government and the cabinet was elected in the Legislative Assembly, I then, at that time I was the leader, I could say to the country, these are the policies which the government that you elected will strive to achieve. Yeah. And that was miles and miles difference in what I encountered mm -hmm. in 2000. So, you know, sometimes people say you have bad experiences, but God has a way of making bad experiences end up to be very beneficial in the learning process mm -hmm. and so said so done so thank god for all of that Reminded without that one the song. other wouldn't have been like Reminded in our country song sometimes i thank god for unanswered prayers yeah and certainly Absolutely. in that case because that's what worked out now what are the qualities that you look for in persons for membership into the people's progressive movement and not just political candidates but certainly the many countless individuals that make up a successful uh, party, party system or party. Uh, what are the qualities you look for in individuals? First of all, a good worker. Mm -hmm. Like you, Ben. Okay. <laughs> um, honesty, integrity. Someone that is willing to to actually 
hold roles in, in the party, to be able to hold positions. Team player. Um, a team player. Um, just an overall good person that is willing to to be there, to be able to, you could, to, for us to call on, for anyone to call on and they're there to work, to assist with any sort of task that we may need um, carried out. Just an all around good person that we can always depend on. Do they have to be Caymanian or can it be anyone? In order for them to qualify, to be a member of the People's Progressive Movement. Um, they have to be 16 years or older. They have to be resident here for at least five years. Or they have to have some connection or some family mm -hmm. to a Caymanian in order to qualify as a member um, to okay. join our party. I see, thank you for that. Now, needless to say, Caymanians too. Yeah, Caymanians as well. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> yes. Well, that's first and foremost is yes. to be a Caymanian. That's right. Now, there is more to a political party than simply contesting a general election. Um, tell us a little bit about the ongoing work that the People's Progressive Movement has ahead. done and continues to do uh, at the community level as well as the team members, the countless volunteers, that makes this possible year after year. Austin, I've been with the People's Progressive Movement for, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Right after these guys formed the party, me and many members, meaning movers and shakers, were on the ground. So first and foremost, we had to work on getting and identifying a place, a home for the party in terms of a building. So I had to call all of our movers and shakers, as many as possible to come out and assist with getting the building up and running. And that included painting, cleaning windows, doing whatever it was to, to, to make this place habitable. What's, what's important, forgive me one second, what's important, at that time, there was no supplementary funding from government or anything like that mm -hmm. for, for parties to do anything. So that was either by donation or out of our own pockets, if you remember. Yes, Not sir. like it is nowadays. Absolutely. So we had to go out there and either seek sponsorship to, for the paint or whatever we had to do in order to, to make this happen. Um, we would go out, we actually had district um, committees mm -hmm. and those district, in those district committees the members would actually go out and identify a home for a senior perhaps that just needed some work, maybe a paint job, some other renovations to it, we would actually do that. We would just have our Four members, whoever would come out, we would act, um, just appeal to volunteers to come out to assist us. Um, we would actually, I mean, back in the day, from the very beginning, we had our Christmas seniors party. And I recall that I think the very first one was at Mr. Tibbetts' house. And then we had some at um, Alfonso Wright's house and then um, at Sir Alden's home. So we always took care of our seniors. And there were many roles that our members played. Um, I actually started the, the youth arm of the People's Progressive Movement. And I had, back in the day, we had several young uh, people that were involved. And we would also go there and, and um, carry out various projects that included the youth and I must say that today even though that still doesn't obtain today in terms of having the youth arm very active that is something that we're working on just now to bring to for that to become 
aren't you all, to act, activate that again. Aren't you all doing something on Saturday too? Yes, um, we will be doing our uh, back to school drive and that's something we've done, back to school fair I should say, and we've done that several years as well. Just provide free school supplies for our students in the primary schools. So it's tons of other projects and um, other tasks and stuff we've done throughout the years, throughout our 20 years um, um, in being. Is, and we want to continue to do as much as we can for our people. Indeed. Now, when you reflect on 20 years, it's no small number, but certainly 20 years of a functioning, cohesive, effective party system, what were some of the more notable achievements? And also, do you believe the party system is still relevant in today's world? Well, maybe the last answer first and sure. work backwards. Yes, sir. It is obvious to me that the party system is integral to the successful politics of our country. And I don't think we have to look far to understand that. Um, everyone has their own idea of what is best. Most people vary in their thinking at some point in time. Because not everyone agrees with everything that everyone thinks, it is impossible to try to get that to work after the fact. You need to iron those issues out because if you don't and you try to iron them out after an election, you are doing a great disservice to the people you are asking to vote for you. So I've had it all. I've, I've been mm -hmm. from one side to the other side. And I say this not pointing any fingers or anything of the sort. But what I truly believe, others have their own ideas, but I certainly would not want to be a part of any future government without having the ability to be able to go to the public when you ask them to vote for you and tell them who the leadership is going to be and what the policies are going to be at a bare minimum. And if we are not with that entrenched in our society, my view is that it will slowly but surely go back to worse than what it was. That's my personal view. Yes, indeed. Um, and Pete Conley, do you share those views? I certainly do, um, Mr. Austin. And I certainly wouldn't be here today if it wasn't that I believed in the party system and the core values, the core policies, and just being a group of people that come together to agree on issues or whatever that affects our country. I'm, I'm wholeheartedly in agreement, and I would, like I said, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't that I, I shared those same yeah, indeed. sentiments. As you said uh, from the beginning, I think without fear of contradiction, the modern constitution in which we enjoy today um, can certainly be noted in history as an accomplishment of the People's Progressive Movement. Are there others? Certainly, um, we amended our constitution in 2009, and that was a major step in the modernization of our constitution. Um, we also, some of our other accomplishments were the government administration building, which yeah. was the godchild of the Honorable D. Kurt Tibbetts. Yes. Didn't actually, wasn't completed during our um, administration, but it was shortly thereafter. Yes. And the airport, the new airport was under our administration. 
we also had major road works um, during our administration. Um, but any more that you can add? Just on the government administration building, I believe at the time it became the first major infrastructure project that was LED uh, certified, and that has certainly become uh, standard practice, if you will, now for buildings of the future. Including our building, included <coughs> in our building code. Yes. Yeah. Um, a typical example, <laughs> I was amazed. The old glass house, the, light, the electricity bill used to be $55,000 wow. per month. And when that other building was up and running, which is um, 210, 4 to 5, 4 or 5 times larger. Yes. And the, the electricity bill was four to five thousand dollars. Wow! 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 So five times larger than the original glass house, but still uh, enjoying a less cost for oh, electricity. Oh. Wow! And um, other efficiencies in the building. Of course. Um, of course, like everything else. And he was never involved in politics. And God rest his soul because he has passed on now. But there was a gentleman by the name of Jim Scott mm -hmm. who was our man Flint, meaning the government's bridge between the contractors and the building. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Jim fought tooth and nail every inch of the way to ensure that the government got value for money. And that was something that the country should take pride in yes indeed really indeed another one that comes to mind most recently uh, is of course the transition from the original legislative assembly to now parliament yep. of the cayman islands that we enjoy yes. which gives us a bit of a, a common ground with uh, uh with other parliaments around the world <laughs> that's since my time yes but just so that you will know, that was a decade in working at it. I believe it. To get it to that point. I believe it. Yeah. I, believe I, it. I, I was part of two administrations which were not successive administrations. Sure. Trying to get to that point. Just a little bit of difficulty. Some people not wanting to relinquish. But yes. Eventually we got there, and I think everybody's happy now, which is absolutely important. Indeed, it's you not the bodies that we think about in the positions. It's the processes and the procedures which make it different now from what it used to be. Indeed, indeed. And you mentioned, uh, of course, uh, uh, successive government administrations. I don't think, whilst I don't think the PPMs 2013 and then 2017 uh, win at the polls represented the first continuous government administration, but certainly it was the first successive government administration uh, in over a decade. Uh, and certainly that has to also uh, feature on that list of things we remember most. Absolutely. Indeed. Well, <coughs> Honorable Kurt Tibbetts, MP Barbara Connolly, I want to thank you both for being our guest here on Let's Talk and sharing with us a little bit about the history and formation that is and was the people's progressive movement uh, i want to give you each an opportunity for some closing and or final thoughts thank you austin um, as always it's good to be here and um, like i say thank you to honorable d kurt tibbetts for being here with me and um, for you as our host um, it's been a pleasure being here today it's been a pleasure having you miss Connolly. It's been a Mr. long Tibbetts. time since I've had to do anything like this. Great. Um, I actually used to enjoy it. <laughs> it's not so bad after all. I was wondering how it would feel. Um, but in reminiscing over the 20 years of the progressives, I can't say to you that I have any regrets about being part of forming the party. 
and assisting with getting it, getting it up and functioning. And I believe that it is as important as any other cog in the wheel for the politics of this country, for the progressives to continue and all of these activities that I'm understanding will be happening to celebrate the 20 years. I hope that that will garner new membership and give new impetus to the party so that we can get more young people involved mm -hmm. and get credible and let me just say credible candidates because we need people to be interested in the affairs of their country. And none of us, I don't know about anybody else, but I think I'm a living example. None of us expect to be around forever. I'm not talking about living, I'm talking about in the world of politics. Some of us are willing to quit earlier than others, but notwithstanding all of that, there needs to be continuity. So I pray to God that we get some new faces, new interested faces, and the good part about the People's Progressive Movement is that there is scope for everyone and their ideas to be able to become a part of it. So there is no fixation as to how it has to be. Yes. And thank God for us and God bless Kiman. God bless Kiman indeed. God bless you both. Thank you so much uh, for being our guests here on Let's Talk and certainly to our audiences. We hope you too have enjoyed today's episode. If you did, remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can check back on regularly for more details on events planned for this 20 year celebration of the PPM. For Let's Talk, exploring the issues affecting all of our lives, I'm your host, Austin Harris. Until next time.